today's episode, I have the pleasure of talking to Tony Sofian, who I will refer to as Pat Tony, who is a principal architect at TSDS Interior Architects, an architecture and interior design studio that he started back in 2011, and throughout the years have completed numerous private, commercial, and public space projects. In all of his projects, Pat Tony has always seen through mere functions of buildings. In fact, he also always pays attention to materiality, environmental impacts, and other external factors the building impose. This makes TSDS's approach a unique one, and certainly one that is worth learning about. So for today, Pat Tony Sofian is going to share with us his thoughts on sensibility and materiality in contemporary architecture. First of all, thank you so much, Pat, for being here with us today. Thank you, Karina, for inviting me in this conversation. So, Pat Tony, you always seem to emphasize a lot on having sensibility when talking about a body of work or about architecture. Do you mind elaborating more on what is sensibility and why is it important in architecture? Yes, uh, sensibility, I think, is something like uh, a window, probably, to... Uh, approach or to uh, get understanding about the uh, materiality subject in the architecture. So, of course, they 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 uh, depends on the senses. Like uh, I think it's more than uh, five senses. Yeah, kinesthesia. Uh, there is a gustation. There is a uh, a lot of senses. The whole body uh, ex- experience senses. So to understand uh, materiality, uh, we must uh, experience the sensibility first to get a description of the several materiality or uh, in architecture to get essence for the sake of the meaningful experience in architecture. I see. So why is sensibility toward material so important or so primary these days? So. There is, a, I think, a priority. Uh, used to be the, the materiality is like a secondary issue. So uh, the materiality, when we understand about uh, like bamboo, I think, the bamboo have uh, several specific typology that can be open. Uh, bamboo is more social uh, than the other material, uh, such as uh, brick or, or concrete. So to build something like a shelter, so there is a different typology, I think. When, when the materiality issue is not primary, we can interchange the, the form with the other material. But in this issue, we cannot do that because we must do the study and the, do the, the form giving of the architecture uh, all over again to get the essence of the material instead of the interchange the, the uh, one material to the other. Yeah, and I think the reason why there is so much emphasis on material is because there is seemingly so much more to it yeah, than what the eyes can see. I mean, yes, there are things that are tangible like texture, for example, but We must not forget also that there are things that we cannot see, those intangible qualities that come with it too. Yes. So the process of understanding of architecture, we must experience into the the space. So when we get into the space, uh, all the senses, like the whole body experience, activate like a prey ratio first thing before we understand like in the logical way. So... uh, the prey ratio is important to us because very fast experience when we, we, we enter the, the ambience or the atmosphere of one structure of building. So the engagement of the material should be the first experience contact with the reception of the body. Of course, there is an intangible impact. Yeah. For example, like this, some of the director of the film, there is a set, you know, like a set of film who used fake material and the director can be acting inside the fake material. So he, has, he must ask the, the, the art director to, to make a real set for the real material like a wood to have a very 
good understanding and the good uh, scene that genuinely the actor can be uh, elaborate when we he walk or he talk in the wood uh, floor, for example. So the ambience of a uh, real material is important to have a very uh, genuine or good originality of the, the architectural experience. Huh. It's funny because the other day I was just taking a lesson on filmmaking and one of the topics they talk about, which is pretty major in creating fiction, is that there must always be some real elements to it, no matter how fake your story is. To make it believable because real people will resonate with real things real reaction real facts and they say it also applies when creating a fictional world which will have rules just like the world we live in now and it is the job of the characters to reveal what those rules are through acting of course and so what you said is true in set and when shooting the film, in order to make it believable, these reactions have to be real. So maybe it will be a jump when touching spiky things or feeling cold when stepping on marble floor first thing in the morning. So yeah, um, maybe it'll be helpful now if we dig deeper into one specific material, uh, such as wood the one material that is so frequently used, I, I would say, in this region? I think it would have a specific description eh, compared to the other material materiality, like a bamboo, like a brick, concrete, not like a glass or everything. Yeah? The description of the wood is like a reminder of how we can live with the other coexistence in this uh, earth, I think. The wood materiality is like a circle of life. Yeah. You can biologically sense that wood represents our earth uh, life being, and then uh, we are part of the circle of life, which is bigger than, than only human. So we can understand the wood is not long lasting material, like they, 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 they have a decay also, and human also will be decaying also. So you're saying that humans just naturally connect with wood as we see them sort of as a companion for living in this earth together. Interesting. So what other qualities of wood make us drawn to it? Yeah, of course, the wood, uh, when we can see the wood, the, the perception of when we touch the, the material, when we when we uh, walk in the floor of wood, you can see the you you can you can feel the the richness of the grain uh, between one wood materiality, which which is unique. And the other character of the wood is there's a nature aroma that we can remind the value of traditional things when we touch and smell the wood. We have a nature aroma that we cannot replace. And then the, 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 the building in the folk traditional architecture uh, would also uh, use, right? Because there's a availability uh, in, the, in the past. And then when, when we see the wood uh, structure, they remind us to be uh, the wood is like a traditional architecture in the past. I see. It is crucial to know that there is this natural connection between us human and wood that I think altogether aid the feeling of comfort when we are situated in a space made of wood. So um, other than connecting emotionally and psychologically, how else can we make the best use of wood? Maybe um, from functional point of view, perhaps drawing from your past works? Oh yeah. When we talk about my past works, supposed to be we talk about the Okumene church in uh, North Borneo. Right? There is an interesting side when we, we try to, to elaborate build the structure there. The site is 
quite a lot of good resource of the wood right there. And then uh, the client asked me to, to build from wood uh, because there's a, a lot of industrial ways that we can use uh, to build that church. So I, I approach is, how about we talk about the single materiality of wood? We can decide uh, wood as, as a very approachable material that we can use in the terms of availability of the wood and then the opportunity of the site and then the, the, the surrounding of the resource. Because in the area, that's um, not so many uh, good architecture. Uh, I think the, the church is supposed to be the landmark of the place, something to, uh, that the local society can be proud of. And then it's, it's interesting because the, uh, the strategy of the project is we have uh, like a two boxes. One box is the function of the, the church itself, like uh, in the ritual and then the praying ritual. And then the other boxes is try to minimize the heat of the site. And we also added convection strategy logic, which is uh, the cold is below and the heat is going up. So we can use a jack roof to make the heat uh, above the, the roof. And then the, the, the cold is from the uh, below side. We make a, like a very good ventilation to cross it. Why we do that? Because we, we try to make uh, minimum energy electricity. You're saying that wood was a good material to use uh, to help you achieve these green initiatives uh, you try to pull through when making this low energy building. Right. Yeah, no, especially if the wood is sourced locally, right? I remember in Leed, uh, if a good portion of the material comes from within 500 mile radius, then you get points for regional materials, right? Because that alone already reduces the energy towards transportation. So that's awesome. I guess um, another question would be, when we were talking about sensibility in architecture, um, why did you specifically mention contemporary architecture? Yeah, I think when we talk about the contemporary architecture, there is a, we talk about the novelty of the discipline, I think. Uh, when we have a discourse in this, this uh, architectural discourse, should be there's a, so many newness in the, so many level. So in this issue, we can see the indicator with the Pritzker Prize winner, like uh, RCR. RCR win the, the Pritzker Prize because they concern, they have a strong point of the materiality, the use of the materiality. They use also the immateriality world because they, they try to, to blend with the nature and then make the architecture is like more light or disappear with the immaterial. So when we talk about the materiality, of course, uh, there's the other things that connected with the materiality, such as uh, immateriality or the quasi things, I think. The quasi thing is, is quite in, in the between, between the immateriality understanding and the, the psychologically or the sensibility uh, issue of the uh, subject, I think. Right, quasi thing. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess I'm wondering, I mean, I know that quasi thing, the existence is not new, but it has increasingly becoming more and more popular, especially in architecture, where many people seem to be talking about it now. <laughs> so why is it so? And why is why it only emerged like three years ago and not like many, many years before, you think? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, so many young architects or the students yeah, who try to manipulate material or to elaborate or engineer the material to make structure or shelter. So the question is, how about when we make like uh, atmospherical or the other things that the material that we can engineer, the, the one who cannot, we cannot 
see the one that we cannot touch, the one that we cannot uh, smell. The, the other things that uh, we cannot define is we call it uh, quasi things. But the, the quasi things have an uh, impact to our uh, experience, uh, real, but we cannot define. When you see a gas, I think you can smell the, the this very disturbing smell, I think. But you cannot define where's, where's the smell uh, between one kilometer or 100 meter. That one is, we, we cannot define, right? The smell. Mm. But there is existence with us. When we approach or we we, we facing the quasi things today, uh, mm. uh, the architectural have a new normal to have a response to the quasi things as good as possible, like an uh, issue of the pollution, I think. The issue of pollution is qu quite different, or, uh, quite difficult also. I think it's kind of, kind of terms uh, quasi things also, because the pollution is have a very deep impact to our uh, life. Difficult to define, but uh, there is a real, the real thing, I think. Uh, that's actually an interesting point of view, because I was going to say that architects these days should be able to orchestrate something beyond space so meaning should be able to recreate quasi thing uh, which is true but you are also saying that it is an architect's job to react to it as if it, it, it should be some of the problems they're trying to solve using their work Yes, when, when the architect gives uh, material to work with so we can creatively uh, form or study about the material, engineer it, and then we build things. But when we talk about the, the things that are very intangible, not really uh, easy to define, there's a, a way to practice it. I think in the future, we must, we must exercise to our new student how to face these quasi things and how to manage I think, or to control uh, this thing to impact our new different life. Right, so maybe later in the end, architects don't just become designers of space yet. They also become designers of experiences, designers of smell and sound. I think the sound one is quite uh, interesting because there's a Peter uh, uh, yeah in the mm. oh, I, I forget the, the, the year of the expo, they, they, they proposed the Swiss pavilion with the sound uh, ambience. So uh, the, the architecture is stacked with the wood, like a stacking of the wood, but mm. not as a visual impact, but as a sound impact. How the sound can be experienced uh, quite differently. Kind of interesting work from, from Peter Zumthor. Yeah, I think you're referring to the 2000 Expo in Hanover. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You talk about the, how to propose the sound. Peter Zumthor is uh, very strong in materiality, like uh, Thermafat, Switzerland, like a stone yeah. architecture. But the other thing is in the Thermafat, you can you can experience the the heat of the, the the water, the the coldness of the winter in hot water experience, and then the sound of the cave between the architectural of stone senses and enhance more by, uh, by the work. All the senses we have in the holy body can uh, they use it for the understanding and the meaningful architecture. It's quite interesting to mm -hmm. see the, uh, the work of Peter Zumthor. Okay. The other project, he, interesting, there is a chapel, I think, he built that he made from the concrete, but the concrete itself has a precast. Interestingly, the, he, he wants to enhance this, the sense of smell, I think, in this project. So the precast is burned by him to have a sense of burn, which is controversially interesting, I think. So when we, we walk to the chapel, we can smell the burn. So he used the 
uh, immateriality subject like a uh, smell of burn of the heat of the water and then everything so after we, we can understand the atmospherical understanding or the essence of the material we can also understand about the other thing new one as the quasi things i think the atmosphere world is important here yeah i'm still amazed sometimes at how much deeper our experiences in a space can be when our senses are heightened especially as you said when there are things that are not supposed to be there. So it becomes interesting that an architect can trigger or shape a certain kind of behavior from just setting up those things at the right place and at the right time. Um, cool. So maybe we should end the interview here, leaving us wondering how much an architect can do when they are sensible towards a material. Thank you so much, Pat Tony, for your time. Really, really appreciate your sharing today. We really learned a lot. Thank you, Karina, for the opportunity to talk. Uh, maybe we talk later. Eh? <laughs> <laughs>